Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited to share this video with you today. I've been getting a lot of questions about the Cricut and how to use it and everything related to Cricut. So it has inspired me to start some Cricut Basics, Cricut 101, I have a Cricut so now what type videos and I thought I would start with what you need if you are considering purchasing a Cricut or have one and well actually later on will be what you do when you have one but if you're considering purchasing a Cricut I have my top must-haves for what you need to start off when you get one. Uh, I don't have everything but I have a list of just a couple of things um, I don't know about three or five or so things that you're going to need to go along with your Cricut including the Cricut. My Cricut is immediately to the right here. <laughs> I can't get it in my screen but it is there so obviously that is number one. The Cricut um, machines that are available now are the Cricut Air or Explore Air. I'm not totally 100% clear on what the actual name is but the Cricut Air, um, the Cricut Maker and the there's another one. I'm not sure what it is. They're all basically the same machine. The only difference between them all is your Bluetooth capability. So if you are thinking of purchasing a Cricut, um, any one of those machines will work, is good. They pair to your computer and when you get them um, all set up, it'll take you through the steps to set it up and get it paired to your computer. The other things that you are going to need is a spatula. Um, this came with my original Cricut way back in the day. <laughs> I have never yet replaced it. You can see that it is well loved. Um, I very often use it to scrape off the images off of my Cricut mats. If you are a card maker, I don't have this tool, but if you are a card maker, you are going to want um, you are going to want the tool for creasing your paper for making the bends in it, so you can fold your paper. I can't think of what it is <laughs> right now. I know I have bone folder in my head, but that is not what it's called. Um, it's going to be a little attachment probably that comes in a little tube like this that will do the like embossing I guess for you. Um, this little thing right here that I have, I have not opened it yet because um, I don't need it, is a replacement blade. And that is something else that you are going to need as well for your machine. Quite honestly, um, you are not going to need a lot of these. I've had a Cricut for as long as I have been married. So that'll be going on 13 years. And I've only replaced the blade once. And quite honestly, I didn't need to replace the blade, but I thought I would because um, sometimes the paper will tear while I'm cutting. Um, and my husband thought maybe it was because I needed a new blade. So just to test and see th how things went, I replaced the blade. And quite honestly, I didn't need to replace it. <laughs> um, these puppies will last you forever, but have one on hand. They come in packs of two. So the new one that I put in is already in the machine. Um, and this is the second one. I just keep it stored 
inside my Cricut there are two little um, flaps that will open so you can store pens and other miscellaneous tools. Um, I keep this in there uh, so I don't lose it. So you need your Cricut, you need a spatula, you will need blades. If you are a card maker or you do um, like home decor and off the page products, you will need the um, embossing tool, the one that makes creases in your paper so you can fold the paper and that sort of thing. The other thing that is really important to have when you want to use a Cricut is cardstock and or pattern paper. Um, I don't have full sheets of pattern paper on me but scraps are ideal for your die cutting. Um, I keep all my scraps and of course because you are using your Cricut you'll probably go through paper faster than you would otherwise. Um, but keep your scraps and make sure you have cardstock and pattern paper on hand. The thickness is not really that big a deal. I find these scraps right here are close to my heart pattern papers. They are too thin for cutting on the Cricut. Um, something a little bit heavier weight. Like, I don't know what the weight is for these pattern papers. I think the cardstock, this is close to my heart cardstock, is it like at least 80 pound? Their pattern paper is lighter than that. So thin pattern papers are not really a good fit with your Cricut. Buy quality pattern paper and cardstock from some of the more reputable, reputable companies, America, American Crafts, um, Pink Fresh. Pink Fresh is really nice because their cardstock is quite, or pattern paper is quite thick. Cutting on the Cricut with their paper is really, really nice. Um, just make sure you find thicker paper to work with. I don't cut letters or alphabets from close to my heart pattern papers. I also don't do more intricate designs on their pattern paper either. I do very basic shapes like circles or squares or very simple, not intricate images from their pattern paper and it cuts fine. The cardstock from Close to My Heart, which is I use solely in my crafting, I have never had an issue with the paper tearing, whether I'm doing alphabets or intricate images. Of course, if they're really small, you kind of run into some problems, but um, their cardstock is really nice to work with and also very important to have if you want to use a Cricut. Um, and like I said, the other companies out there have fantastic paper to work with as well. And last but not least, I don't know how garbage got in there. If you are going to work with a Cricut and want to use it in your crafting, you need to have a cutting mat. This is my box of cutting mats. I have subscribed to the Cricut Access um, subscription, I guess. Um, and I got this pack. I don't know how many is in here now. There had to have been 50 mats. Because I've used a couple already. Um, for a really, really great price. And shipping was free as well over a certain amount of your order total. I can't remember what it is right now offhand. But anyways, you need cutting mats. There are a variety of cutting mats out there that you can get from Cricut. There is a blue mat, there is a green mat, and there is a purple mat. I highly recommend going with this, move this down so you can see it, the standard grip cutting mat from Cricut. The blue mat I think has a very light grip on it and I think you would want to use very delicate materials on that mat. Things like tissue paper, 
um, fabric even possibly, just things that would tear really easily or that are very thin because um, the adhesive that's on it is not very strong. The purple mat on the other hand is the really sticky grip and I have found I don't like using the purple cutting mat because it will tear your paper um, and I think it is meant for more heavy duty materials such as poster board and things that are quite a bit thicker in nature than your regular cardstock would be. So the golden child of the cutting mats is the standard grip. It's really, really nice to work with. Um, the only downside, if I can say that there is a downside, is the more you use your Cricut, <laughs> the faster you go through your cutting mats. There are uh, things out there that, like tutorials that'll help you um, extend the life of your cutting mats by washing them off and letting them air dry and that sort of thing. I have never done that. Um, I don't know if they work. If you have tried it, let me know. I'd be interested to find out. Um, but that's, I think my list of like top five things that you would need starting out with your Cricut if you wanted to get one. These are the things that you would need to have. Uh, so just to recap really quickly, cutting mats, the green ones, very important. Um, each of them comes with like this acetate cover on them just to keep the mats clean. I tend to keep these every so often because they are perfect for your mixed media if you wanted to do the packaging technique. I think this would be also ideal for doing any pocket style um, like shaker elements that you want to do. It's a bit thin. So I don't know, you might want something a little bit thicker, but I think that would work as well. Each mat comes covered with this. They all have the little hole at the top as well. Um, so I actually hang mine when they are not in use. Um, I have a little 3M hook on the inside of my a drawer in my desk, and that's where I hang my mat um, when I'm not using it. So. Even the green and the purple ones have this too. It's just, it comes standard on the mats. There are different sizes as well. That's something to keep in mind. Um, I get the 12 by 12, but I think you can also get six by 12 mats. And I think there may even be mats that are bigger than this as well. I don't know, cause I haven't, um, haven't had a need to use them and haven't researched it but I stick with the 12 by 12 um, for the Cricut Joy because it's so much smaller I would imagine there are smaller mats that goes with it um, but once again I haven't seen them so so mats number one cardstock or just paper in general number two spatula you can't go wrong with a spatula cutting what is this the blade and then your creasing tool as well um, so those are my top five when I first got my Cricut many moons ago they did not come in a starter pack that would include things like this and other tools that you would need right off the bat. These were all gotten separately. Now you can get a tool pack and uh, they have all the necessary tools that you may need for your crafting depending on what you want to do. Um, whether it's vinyl or just paper cutting or your heat press if you get a heat press and uh, everything that you need is, is in a little starter pack. Um, you can look on Amazon, you can look directly on Cricut to purchase all of these items and actually I will leave a link to my Cricut affiliate shop 
in this description box down below so that you can go check it out and definitely shop around and compare if you're interested in getting a die cutting machine um, personally I think the software for the Cricut is a lot more user friendly than the silhouette I've never used the silhouette so quite honestly I can't compare but from what I have observed and seen and come across from other crafters uh, their software is I think um, a lot more complicated than the Cricut software is the Cricut software to me at least anyways from my perspective is very user-friendly and I do plan on in the future showing you how to use the Cricut and all the functions in the Cricut and start off with just learning how to cut an image to eventually building up to making pages like I do in my design videos. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all about the Cricut, leave them down in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If I don't know the answer to your question, I will research it and get back to you and we'll learn together. I will be the first to admit that there is a lot about the Cricut that I don't know. I use my Cricut mainly for cutting and you know like cutting images and making scrapbook layouts but there's so many other things that you can do with your Cricut to make projects. You can write, you can draw, um, there's vinyl, I've never cut the vinyl before, um, there's uh, foil, there's all sorts of things that you can do with the Cricut and I hope that through this series together we will learn and explore all of the different things that the Cricut can do and uh, hopefully this will be something that will be uh, useful for everybody and including me because like I said there's I there's still a lot for me to learn too as far as the Cricut goes but I'm game to learn along with you and share with you what I already know and I guess learn some new things together so like I said if you have any questions or any comments leave them in the, the comments below I will leave a link to both Amazon and my Cricut affiliate link in the description box down below um, so you can check out these tools yourself um, I'll also leave the link to my close to my heart affiliate well my shop as well um, so if you wanted to check out their pattern papers and their cardstock, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, if not, that's totally cool as well. Shop what you know and craft with what you know. So if you love Pink Fresh Studio, if you love Crate Paper, or if you love Echo Park, use those papers. If you love Basil or Basil, I don't know how you say their name, but if you have love their pattern papers, use that um, there's no right or wrong when it comes to what materials you use with the Cricut and as far as the cutting mat goes too it's going to be trial and error so if you don't like the green standard grip mat but you really like the one with the heavier duty um, adhesive on it use that um, but this is my recommendation I find it's perfect for the cardstock and some people tend not to use this. They just peel off the images themselves with their fingers. That's fine too. I just find for the more intricate ones, this is perfect. And quite honestly, I use this for just crafting in general. <laughs> if I can't pick something up because my eagle talons have gotten too long, this is really helpful. Um, so yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, that is what I have to share with you today as far as my top, top, top five tools that you need to get started if you buy a Cricut. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate every one of you, your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, and welcome to all of my new subscribers as well. 
Um, I'm super excited that you are joining me on this journey and I hope that it inspires you in some way and that maybe somewhere along the way you get something out of it as well. I will be back again soon, hopefully with a scrapbook process video. This week has been a little bit crazy because we are still in lockdown and the kids have had a week of online learning at home. Thank goodness today is Friday, it's the last day. <laughs> we are all ready for a break. The kids need to go back to school and I just need some peace and quiet. <laughs> so again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for your support. And I will be back again, probably this weekend. I'm hoping anyways, fingers crossed with some more new content for you. Take care, TGIF, have a great weekend and I will see you again soon. Bye guys.